let's start with the departure of Michael Beale from Sunderland. <clears throat> Short and not at all sweet for him, really. Just 12 day, uh, games in charge, 63 days as the uh, Sunderland boss, and he departed at the weekend. Um, Joby, it is the shortest reign in the club's history, a relationship that seemed to be strained from the very start, really. Was it ever going to work? Uh, no, I think definitely in terms of the appointment, it just wasn't one that went down well with Sunderland fans. And I think, listen, it's tough when you're going in after Tony Mowbray, but having watched a lot of Sunderland, there were a section of that fan base that weren't very happy with Mowbray. They thought that, you know, maybe the football they played, which was really attacking, but was too open at times and didn't give them a, a good enough opportunity to win enough games. But certainly this man's appointment didn't appease any of those fans. And it seemed as though it was just going to be a matter of time. Obviously, results weren't fantastic. Really bad one again in the cup against Newcastle. They just <laughs> haven't kicked on, Jules. I think what he really needed was an, a really, really good start. Losing to Tony Mowbray's team seemed uh, quite ironic, actually, his last sort of game there. Um, and I just think, for me, it was a ridiculous decision by the board to replace Mowbray in the first place. And they just haven't really recovered. This was obviously another nail in the coffin. Trey Hume coming off and wow. he actually gives him a shout and he looks like he just blanks him. And that picked up a lot he of traction. He didn't see him. Which I've got to say, Jules, you know, <laughs> there's no way he would have intentionally blanked him, in my opinion, if he wasn't aware then that's something that maybe he's got to take a little bit of credit for because he's knowing the players coming round the pitch just to give him a little high five as he, as he comes off. And again, that's something that was doing the rounds on social media and certainly the fans were not happy with that, whether they felt he meant it or not. Um, and I think just maybe that little lack of connection to the players and the football club is what's told for him in the end. Mm. Tom, this is your old club. I mean, you know, popular or not, if he won eight of those 12 games, we wouldn't be having this conversation, would we? No, no, absolutely. Look, it's a, the it's same a, with every manager. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a results-based business. Um, I think there's a bit more going on to this than just probably the results. Um, won four out of the 12 that he's there. It's not brilliant, not awful. Came in in December, so he's not had a great deal of time. You know, the amount of games you get over that Christmas period, he's got no chance to work with the team at all. Really, probably only the first kind of international break that he gets that opportunity, a couple of weeks to sit down and, and work with the team. So, for me, there, there's definitely some undercurrent going on. Whether it's, um, you know, I, I know he was desperate from what I read about trying to get a centre forward in during the transfer window. That didn't happen. Which they have been for a very long time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, they're very reliant on Jack Clark, um, and, and teams have kind of worked them out that if they nullify Jack, it's very hard for them to score. They've not got a lot of goals throughout the rest of the team. Um, Joe Bellingham obviously pops out. He's done very well, but he's really young. He's an 18-, 19-year-old lad. You're relying a lot on, on quite an experienced squad there. So I do think perhaps there's a little bit more going on in the boardroom for him, and maybe promises were made that weren't backed up during the January transfer window. But um, like Joby said, I think if the fans aren't happy and having played there... The fans can turn quite quickly. There's big expectancy there. They're a Premier League club in the Championship, underperforming, and they expect to be in the playoffs this year. And if he came in and didn't put kind of the performances on the pitch and nothing was changing, then if the fans turn, it's a really hostile and tough place to go. So probably the writing was 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 on the cards when when that started to happen, and the fans are are giving him quite a bit of stick, which seemed to seemed to be the case quite early on. He has put out a statement this evening through the, the League Managers Association. He, he references actually the, the owner and the sporting director, uh, says that they were always open and honest with him and he wants to place on re record his sincerest thanks for the support they gave him during what he calls a tough period personally. And I should just point out, he also references the fans uh, and he thanks them for that show of support we saw um, a week or so ago when there was the minutes applause uh, at the Plymouth game um, for um, Beale's niece, who, who is Paulie, and he, he thanked the fans for that gesture, which he said showed huge empathy and warmth and is something he will, uh, he will never forget. But Merce, you know, he's not lasted long there. He didn't last long at Rangers. H how damaging has this last six, <coughs> seven months been for Michael Beale's reputation as a manager, do you think? I, there's only two things you're assured of in management. Paying your taxes and getting the sack. And that's the way it is. It don't matter, you know, unless you're Sir Alex Ferguson, very rarely it always happens. You know, sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter. You've got, to, you've got to stay confident. You've got to believe in what you're doing. He got these jobs because of what he does. You don't become a bad manager overnight. You know, I think it's the only job in the world where 
you get the sack and you get a job straight away again. I think if you got the sack in a warehouse, you wouldn't get a job in a warehouse again next week. But you will in management. So he's just got to stay to his word. You know, I think when you start doubting yourself, I think that's when you struggle as a manager. You know, because it's not in your hands as a manager. You know, as soon as they cross the white line, them players, it don't matter what you do. You know, they they got to perform, and you just got to you know you got to pray that they perform and they do everything you told them to do. But he'll be back, 100% he'll be back. Mm. Probably be on this show before he's back, but he'll be back. <laughs> in hindsight, Joby, should he have stayed at QPR where he was having success? In it's definitely time, looking, so. looking like that now. And I'm sure, listen, we've all had moments in our careers where you've got to make a decision, you know, maybe to move, maybe to stay. And only hindsight and time tells whether that was the right decision. By now, it looks like a really poor one, I think, in terms of what he looked to have built there. And maybe just to build his build his reputation because I think that's the big thing like you said at the moment you know does he get another job at this level again I don't think so off the back of this last one you know he's taken a oh, real really? young no he's taken a young energetic vibrant team and just doled it down really they haven't been any better certainly so I don't know who's going to be in a rush to, to reappoint but you know when, you know when he have to go now yeah Jim? when he left think, uh, Rangers did you think he would get the um, Sunderland job did you think no I was surprised that he got available. This. yeah oh, okay. because it's a great job they were doing really well they're just sort of in and around the playoffs and yeah. I, I just don't think he's taken it on a level so again the way that management is now uh, for me I think it's a real tough ask for him to come back in at, at this level man so, where, 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 so what, what go abroad Possibly. I mean, maybe rebuild a little bit as a coach. I mean, that's where he made his name, yeah, yeah. you know, coaching and got right, a lot so that's of credit hard now. for the work. Of course that's it is. That's hard now when of you've been a manager and then you've got to go back to coaching and someone's telling you what But then that's do. the big question now. Is he a, a really good coach, you know, who does his work on the grass, maybe <laughs> behind somebody? Yeah. Or is he a manager? And I think that's the test for him to have to rebuild because I would certainly have question marks over yeah, the managerial he might, he side might, of it. He might think that now. He might yeah. think, you know what, I want to go back to coaching, not as much pressure. Every player loves me when I'm a coach. They do, don't they? You put your arm around, you'll be back in the team. Yeah. The Soon players like you when you were a coach. What? The players like you when I you were a coach. I wasn't a coach. I was a manager. I wasn't a coach. <laughs> Did you not I wasn't, no, training I was, sessions? Not really. Fridays, probably. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, had good, I had good coaches, yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I was a Fair enough. Coach. I like it. <laughs> no, I like it. Really That's honest. That's honesty. It's a really me. important point. It is important. Today, then come to Warsaw and watch this train one day when you're younger. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, it's, it's important to know what you are, Jules. And I think there's such a demand now on younger yeah. coaches yeah. to be able to do all the work on the grass, handle media, handle players, decisions. I'm not playing you today. How do you deal with that? Yeah. And maybe, from what you're hearing from outside of things, that's maybe a little bit of an issue of his, for sure. I think many years ago, I think Brian Kidd was like that, wasn't he? He's an unbelievable coach, amazing coach at Man United, and then went to Blackburn and they got relegated. But he's an amazing coach. Do you know what I mean? It's not always easy to go from... Being a coach to a manager. I tell you it's, one it's thing. Hard. You know yeah, what? Mertz, Mertz, I know I'm watching this as yeah, well. Sorry, mate. Steve McLaren was exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. You know, Steve McLaren is a coach, one of the best coaches that I've ever worked with. Mm. It was a man at my manager at Middlesbrough. Okay, we li limited success there. But I actually said to him after he came back from uh, from Holland, I said, Would you go back to being a number two? And he went, No chance. Not after I've been the number one. Yeah. But I said, But you're better as a number two. He went, yeah, but I want to be number one. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's the issue that you yeah, have with look, him. Now that. he's number two. You know, yeah. He's at Man United doing a good job. I'll tell you yeah. one thing. You see, with the player, um, Hume, I'm making sure he's shaking my hand, though, if I'm the player. Do you think he's saw him? I don't, I'm not sure, but he was there, like, literally there. I'm, I'm walking round to make a point that you have seen me, and then if you, you dismiss me then, then it is. He can say maybe he did. Would you have patted him terrible. on the shoulder? Would I have patted him? No, I would have patted him and shook his hand, yeah. I would have made a point of, you've got to shake my hand. You've took yeah. me off. You're the manager. We always shake hands. Why are you not going to do it It's very rare, Clinton, for a player to get subbed off and the manager not to give him some kind of whatever it Contact. is. Contact. Handshake, something yeah. as yeah, he comes past. Even, why would Unless you want to shake the manager's hand? It's just brought you off. No, yeah, but, but sometimes you, you have every that time all the happens. time, though, don't oh, you? Oh, really? I, I don't, mean, I don't I like shaking it. Like when the manager goes... You get brought off and he goes, well done. You, well, it weren't well done, was All it? Right, Why then. are you bringing me off? <laughs> so say you're the player. Do you know what I mean? Why but... are you bringing me off? All right, right, well listen, done. we're going to have to move it on. We're going to have to Lucky move it on. We're moving it on. <laughs> I wish we had more time, <laughs> but there's a lot of football to, to, to get to. Um...